guys welcome back to my channel my name is Lizzie if you're new here and I decided that I am going to start a new series of cheer basics and this is going to go through all of the things you need to know to be a cheerleader um, it will give you tips ideas and all kinds of stuff to work on practice conditioning everything that you need to know to become a cheerleader and any kind of cheerleader also so um, with that being said, this week's video is going to be more of like a informational video. I'm not going to give you any anything to try, anything to like work on, homework, none of that stuff. It's more of the information and things that you need to know before you even get started to figure out what you want to do, where you want to do it, all that kind of stuff. So, if you're not already, I'm also posting TikToks about the same cheerleading series and I will link my TikTok down below. Um, I believe my username is lizzieperkins32. If not, I'll have it written. But I'm going to be posting this TikToks in more of like shorter clips of the same thing that I'm going to be giving you in these videos, but shorter as well. Um, and maybe even reels as well. My Instagram is always in the description below also. But I uh, just wanted to give you guys that little informational blurb. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to give you guys a little background information about me. So my name is Lizzie. I am 22, almost 23, and I just graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of Louisville, where I was an all-girl cheerleader for the last four years, um, and I was blessed enough to compete on, on that on small co-ed for the last two years. We won in 2022. This year we got second. Um, but obviously it's still such a great accomplishment, accomplishment, I can't talk, um, to even be able to compete on that, put a Louisville uniform on, like any of that stuff. So if you know anything about college cheerleading, you know that it is very prestigious and such an honor to even be selected to be on a team, let alone to compete on a mat, whether it's UCA, NCA, but I'll get into that in a little bit. But anyways, just wanted to give you guys like background of who I am. I cheered since I was nine years old until I just finished out my senior season in college. So from nine until 22, that's 13 years. Um, I danced before I started and I danced up until I graduated high school. So I also danced for 16 years, I played other sports here and there, but cheer and dance have been my go-tos. So um, that's kind of everything I've done high school. I've done rec, I've done all-star, um, I've been to worlds and I've also done college. So I feel like I have done a good amount of different kinds of cheerleading. So I have, feel like I'm able to give you guys a lot of good tips. Um, but as a disclaimer, I am not any kind of like legal advice person. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice. Um, and this is just my hobby. And I'm just giving you guys tips because this is something that I truly love. And I'm actually going into my first season of coaching a high school team. So I figured that this would be very beneficial to give to my students and my athletes. And I feel like this would be something that I could give to anyone who is new to cheerleading and to help them get started. So now, without that whole introduction, let us get into this video because I think it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy one. First things first, and this is if you're a dancer, if you have any kind of like musical background, you might already know this, but cheer when you're going to like counts or to music. Everything is in an eight count, which means you go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everything is one through eight. There's no nines, tens, elevens, none of that. It's all one through eight. So with that being said, there are also ands of counts. Um, so it could be one and two and three and four and and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that's something that if you've never been any kind of like dance or uh, cheer training, musical training, if you've never had any kind of that training before, it's going to be something that is kind of hard to uh, grasp at first because it goes also with the beat of the music that you're going to. So whether it's, you know, music you hear on the radio or it's a specific cheer mix or even if it's just your coach counting, you're always going to be doing skills and like cheers, all that kind of stuff. You're always going to be doing it to some kind of count. So it's really important that you know that everything is one through eight. One through eight, no matter what, like never changes. There's never more than eight, <laughs> never less than one. So yes, um, so that is first and foremost, that is like the biggest thing that you need to know. The second thing is that there are a whole bunch of different kinds of cheerleading and you might be like, well, cheerleading is cheerleading, but it's not. 
there are so many different routes you can take when it comes to cheerleading. So there's school, and in school there's high school versus college versus middle school. And then there's also all-star, which is a kind of club cheerleading. And then there's also rec, which is also another kind of club cheerleading, usually geared towards younger, younger kids. With that being said, rec is where I started. Um, I started in a league called Pop Warner, which is, I'm pretty sure, throughout the whole entire country of the United States. And it's geared from ages kindergarten up until around middle school, high school, so you can cheer for your high school. Um, and these programs are geared at getting you ready for your high school program. So you cheer football games, and you also compete, um, and you do cheers, and you, at least for me, really learn the basics of what it means to be a cheerleader. Um, and that means learning, you know, learning motions, learning cheers, learning, I mean, you learn everything. You get uniforms, all this kinds of stuff. So that's kind of where rec starts. Um, rec cheer is pretty similar to school cheer in that it gets you ready for school cheer. So school cheer, starting with high school, um, you usually will have some kind of middle school team, JV team, and varsity team. JV stands for junior varsity if you are, uh, if you don't know what that means. Um, so, with the high school team, you usually will start on the middle school team where in New York it is called modified, but it is middle school. And, um, and then you can go up to JV, which is junior varsity, varsity, um, most people know what varsity sports are. So, a lot of states, um, it d depends very heavily if they are considered a sport in that state or if they're not. I know in New York State, cheerleading, competitive cheerleading is considered a sport, so there's a lot of rules that you have to abide by. There's safety rules, deductions, all kinds of like disqualifications. You can't do illegal stunts, you can't do illegal things. Like It's very, very, very uh, regulated in terms of what you can and can't do. Um, there's also limitations on different divisions and all that kind of stuff. There's so many different routes you can take within school cheerleading, and school cheerleading is amazing because it's there it's at your school if your school doesn't have it that's obviously different but most schools will have a school program um for example my school currently has a varsity and jv that in the fall but then in the winter they have varsity jv and modified so it kind of just is different where you are but that is a big thing um and then when it gets to college that's also very different there's schools that don't compete and then there's schools that do compete, and that goes along with high school as well. So, the biggest difference between high school and college, you cheer for sports, usually, um, and you cheer at, you might compete as well. It kind of is very dependent on what school, what you do, whatever. But the biggest difference is the skills that you are able to compete at, different, at these different competitions. So, there's two big high school competitions, and there's the same two big college competitions, that are that the rules are completely different but they're both pretty similar in terms of like style so there's NCA and UCA NCA is a bit more of a showy style you might do a cheer but your routine is very more performance based um, in terms of like choreography all that kind of stuff whereas UCA you do a cheer with signs and megs it's very crowd based and you really want your crowd to engage with you um, and you also do skills, you also do tumbling, you also do jumps. You do very much of the same components in each routine. It's just the choreography and the style and the setup of each routine is very different between the two different um, NCA and UCA. And that goes for high school and college. So when you're looking at where you are comp currently at in a high school program and you're looking at college programs, that can be something that um, can help you a lot as well. With high school and college and rec being talked about, then there's this whole different kind of cheerleading called all-star. And all-star is its own kind of beast. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you will understand. Um, all-star is a club sport type of organization. Um, it's governed by the USASF which, and the IASF, which are the U.S. All-Star Federation and the International All-Star Federation, I believe that's what those stand for. And both of these govern pretty much the entire world in terms of All-Star cheerleading. So All-Star cheerleading is you usually will go to this gym and they have specific teams that have specific ages and levels to them. 
that are geared towards excelling at that level. So in All Star, there are seven levels. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One being the most basic stunts, most basic tumbling, um, and seven being college level, even harder than some college level item, um, things, baskets, pyramids, stunts, all the above. So there's a very wide range that you can do in All Star, and I would say that's probably the most different, like versatile range that you can have in cheerleading would probably be an all-star because it ranges from level one to level seven. It also ranges in age. So you can go from all the way from minis, prep level, to uh, open teams, which don't have an age limit. So mini teams, I believe, are like maybe even younger than this, but they are around five and six. I want to say it's like kindergarten age, but I believe they also have like very tiny teams too. Tiny. Tinies is the one. Not minis. Tinies is the youngest, and I believe that's like three to four. And then there's minis, um, which is usually five to seven maybe. Youth teams are around six to ten maybe. I don't know the exact age range, and I can link it down below the USASF grid. Um, but then there's, so there's tinies, minis, youth junior, senior, open. So there's six different age ranges and then there's seven different levels. Granted, level seven is only open age, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure other than like the very young ones, you can do just about any age and level. With that being said, All Star is very, very, very expensive. Uh, it's a very big like world of cheerleading it's very like there's so much to it routines um the uniforms you wear the cost of it all of the above it's just so much different than also or college and high school because you don't cheer for a football team you don't cheer for a basketball team you are just competing and that is the whole goal and for some people that is everything they want in life they just want to compete they want to train almost year round to compete for four months of the year and get a chance at you know competing at one of these bigger end of year events that that could be it for you that could be all you ever wanted in life and that's perfectly fine i mean some people i've done all all of them so i i know the differences um there are plenty of different divisions out there for you if you are wanting to get started in cheerleading and you are any age you can join just about any there is a team somewhere that has just about anything you could ask for. So, that being said, I hope that gives you guys a good idea of the difference between rec, school, and all-star. Um, there's definitely way more into it, but that's kind of just like the super high, high level difference between the three different types of cheerleading. Another thing that I wanted to bring up, which this kind of relates to this video a little bit, kind of relates to some older things that I've done before that you can't see anymore because that channel got deleted, but uh, a big thing that helped me getting into cheerleading was watching old YouTube videos. Um, I got into cheerleading, into like specifically all-star cheerleading. Um, I would say when I was in seventh or eighth grade, kind of when I started high school cheer, I'd been cheering for a while, but I would never really like, I wasn't super big into all-star until I found the California all-stars Lady Bullets and Cali Coed from Worlds 2012. That is like, the two routines that I was just like, that is some good cheerleading. And granted, things have changed so much since 2012. I mean, it's been 11 years since Worlds 2012. But it's just so crazy to see, like, the things that brought me into cheerleading. Granted, back when I got into cheerleading, those videos were only one, two years old. It's not crazy. I, you know, whatever. Anyways, um, if you go back and look, those are some videos that, like, got me into cheerleading, um, honestly, Lady Bullets 2013, Senior Elite 2013, um, TGLC, if you watch any video of TGLC, I'm sure you'll fall in love with cheerleading, because they're just insane. Um, there's just so many different videos, so many different teams out there, mostly world teams, because honestly, everybody loves level 5, 6, um, those routines are just so amazing, so competitive. I mean, it is crazy to go back and look at like how big these divisions used to be. 
it's not quite like that anymore, but how big these divisions used to be, how much talent was in so much of these divisions, it's crazy to look back up. So anyways, without me going on a tangent um, about my favorite cheer teams, I would suggest doing that if you are very much in, like getting into cheerleading and this is like your first experience with it, go back and watch old videos. It doesn't matter who you watch. It could be high school teams, it could be all-star teams, it could be college teams. I mean, college cheerleading has been around forever. So, I'm sure that you can find something to your liking. Say hi to the dunk. It's my baby. Next up are, on our list of things to talk about is stunting positions. Now, I want to preface this by saying you can be anything you want if you put in your effort. And by that I mean if someone wants you to base and you try it out and you're like, hmm, this might not be it for me, I want to try flying, try it. Um, but I think it's just best to try everything and feel what feels best to you. So, there are four different positions, I mean, three different positions, but four different positions when it comes to a stunt group. Um, there is the person on top, that is the flyer, that is usually someone who is very flexible, is very good at holding their balance, can really stand on top of anything. Um, that is going to be the flyer. That is going to be the person on top who is in the air. Then there is the back spot. That is the person that is behind the stunt. They are usually the one that is usually the tallest in the stunt group so that they can reach up higher um, than the bases. Yeah, normally they're the tallest person in the group. This also requires a lot of strength, a lot of upper body strength because you're pulling up, you're lifting up the person on top's ankle, whether it's at prep level or extension level, whatever. Then there's two different bases, and this is for like all girl style stunting. There's a whole different kind of stunting game when it comes to co-ed stunting, but for the most part, when you start cheerleading, you're going to be in an all girl style stunt group. With that being said, there are two bases. There's a main base who's going to be on the flyer's right hand side, and then there's a side base who's going to be on the flyer's left hand side. When it comes to doing preps or any kind of two leg stunt, you guys are going to be doing pretty much the same thing, and that's going to be holding the foot with your wrists together. I'm going to get into like stunt basics later in a different video, but bases are going to hold together. They're going to be kind of standing with their legs a little bit, a bit, a little bit uh, apart, usually shoulder, hip width apart, maybe even more sometimes. Your knees bent, your legs, um, what was I going to say? Your, your legs bent. If it's bent prep, it's here. If you bump it up to extension, you're usually up here looking up at the flyer. You always want to be looking up at your flyer. Uh, that is just basic like tips. Um, I have a plan to get into stunts kind of later in this series. We're going to go through the whole basics of stunting from a squish to all the way up into libs, extended libs, all that kind of stuff. But I just kind of want to give you guys a kind of basic rundown of who does what. Sometimes you will find that in certain aspects of cheerleading there will be someone called a front spotter and that one is usually someone that will stand in front of the stunt. They either hold the base's wrists or they can help hold the flyer's ankles I think if they can reach that high. But you won't see that very commonly um, once you get into higher levels of cheerleading just because it you kind of takes points off and that kind of thing. But in baskets you'll usually see it, that kind of stuff. So. It's something to be aware of. The next thing I wanted to talk about is kind of the finances of cheerleading. This kind of goes hand in hand with the whole different kinds of cheerleading um, thing, but it can, I just want to say, say this first, when it comes to finances, it can vary wherever you go. You can find some all-star programs that are very affordable. You can find some all-star programs that are extremely expensive, top of the line, like you go all these places. You can find some school programs that you won't have to pay a dime. You can also find some school programs that you pay for everything. It's just completely different wherever you go. It's definitely something that you need to be mindful of and have an idea of what that looks like for you and your family before getting into it because it can be very different wherever you go. But that being said, usually, and I say usually because I can't speak for every school, usually schools don't require you to pay a tuition fee to cheer for them. If you're paying to go to a school with tuition, that is a little bit different because you're also paying for your education. And like, obviously that is very important. But when it comes to like a tuition specifically to cheer, 
you usually don't find that in cheerle in school cheerleading. You usually will always find that in all-star cheerleading. And it's usually a monthly fee. You usually, like, all your fees most of the time are prorated into this one monthly fee that you pay to the gym once a month. For example, when I did all-star, it was probably not the same anymore. This was probably, like, five, ten years, five, six years ago. I was paying about... 180 a month to be on a team um, and that included one tumbling class a week. It included my comp fees, or no, it included my uniform fees, but it didn't include my comp fees and that was a little bit different. But when it comes to all-star versus school, usually in school cheer, if you have to pay for anything, it would be along the lines of if you're buying a uniform and keeping it, which my school doesn't do that, but I know some schools do that, um, hair bows, shoes, like cheer shoes to, to practice and compete in, um, makeup, hair stuff, t-shirts, practice wear, and that's pretty similar between all-star and, and school cheer is paying for that kind of stuff because that's stuff that you keep. Um, I know that a lot of the times schools will have their uniforms bought by the school and you have to return your uniform at the end of the season because other kids have to use that after you. So that's kind of how my school ran was all of our uniforms were paid for by the school and we could only have those uniforms during the season. But then once our season was over, once we graduated, we had to return those uniforms because those are still being used today. The uniform that I wore is being used by our JV team now. So it's just something that you have to keep be in mind of. Um, and with All-Star, specifically with uniforms, you're usually buying that for yourself and you get to keep that. It's usually, it can be anywhere from like three to $600 for that uniform. If, you're, if your program is awesome, you get to keep that uniform and use it for two years. Um, some programs get uniforms every year. It kind of just depends. It's um, very much up in the air. It's very different for every program and uh, a lot of things vary between them all. So. Um, what is another thing? Obviously, all-star programs have tuition for the most part, like I said. They can be, they can range. I don't really know what the cheapest one is, and I don't really know what the most expensive one is. I only know what I paid to be in an all-star program in high school, and that's kind of it. You pay for everything out of pocket. Um, I'm sure there's, they do offer a lot of fundraising opportunities to help you offset those costs, but most of the time, those don't cover everything unless you put your work in and you put work in to get all of that fundraising covered for you. Um, All-star cheerleading is generally much more expensive than school cheerleading is, at least in my area, at least the way I grew up. Um, because in All-star, you're more likely to travel, whether it being two competitions that are six hours away. Um, I know when I was on an All-star team, when I was in eighth grade, we went to Las Vegas, we went to Dallas, Texas, we went to Orlando, Florida. We went to Columbus, Ohio, like we went all kinds of places. So it's kind of um, just something to be mindful of when you are joining this team is looking at that because those traveling expenses are not included in any of the fees. So you kind of have to be aware of that. You have to know, you have to buy a hotel, you have to pay for transportation, you have to pay for food. You maybe want a souvenir of wherever you went. Like those are all kinds of things that you need to be mindful of when you are looking at doing an all-star program and not to say that these are not things that also come along with school cheerleading as well but you probably are not traveling as far as much as you are in all-star and if you do travel that much honestly props to you because that's awesome and you are truly competing a lot as a high school team um, but at least in this area that is not the norm here so just like to say that um, there can also be so much more to finances of cheerleading but that's kind of just like an overarching basics list. Next, which is not the last one, but the second to last one is your confidence. And this is kind of just like an overall tip um, that I'm giving to you is your confidence will come with practice. Don't expect to just walk in there and it's your first tryouts, it's your first practice with the team, whatever, and you'll have all the confidence in the world because you probably won't and that is completely normal. The more you learn what you're doing, the more you have more knowledge under your belt, the more experience you have, the more confident you will be in your own skills, in your own appearance, in your own anything. 
And I think that is super important to remember is that you're not going to walk in there being super confident in yourself, but also you don't want to look like you're super timid and shy. And I usually have that problem when I'm going into a place I'm very timid, shy, I don't put myself out there very often. It's very hard sometimes, but confidence comes with practice. Confidence comes with reps and repeating things and going over your technique and making sure that you look good. Honestly, one of my biggest tips to people is watch yourself doing XYZ in the mirror. Watch yourself doing this cheer in the mirror. Say, do I look like everyone else looks when we're doing it together? Or if you're learning a dance, watch yourself do the dance in the mirror. It, it, it literally can be anything. But the more you practice, the better you're going to feel and the more awesome that you will be in the end. Last but not least, this is probably something that is like also very different between all star and college and um, school, any kind of school cheer, is your practice versus your game day slash competition attire. So a lot of people see the cheerleaders in the movies who wear their uniforms to school every day and they look beautiful every day. That's not realistic. And the only time I've ever worn my uniform to school was when we had a performance like during an assembly in the middle of the day or something crazy like that. Like that is not the norm and I, <laughs> I don't, wouldn't want to wear my uniform to school. Anyways, if you look at pictures of high school cheerleaders versus all-star cheerleaders, you will notice something very different. All-star cheerleaders tend to wear the crop top uniforms with their stomach out. They're usually like a long sleeve top piece and a skirt or shorts. Sometimes even pants, but most people don't do that anymore. Whereas with high school cheer, you'll usually see a full body covered up with a skirt uniform. Another thing is you will also tend to see more sparkles on all-star uniforms versus school uniforms. Um, and that kind of just goes with like the performance aspect. You're under bright lights at a competition versus on a football field. You're under bright lights, but it's not really the same. You're not the focus of the attention as much as you are at a cheer competition. Um, another thing is practice attire. It kind of depends on where you go to practice. Most of the time, each practice will have a like specific practice wear outfit that you can wear, but that also looks different between school and, and all-star. Sometimes all-star practice wear sets are a sports bra and shorts um, and like a t-shirt that you wear into the gym. Whereas a school practice set may, might just be a t-shirt and shorts and you don't take your t-shirts off at practice or something like that. It's, it's very different and it can honestly vary anywhere you go. And that's kind of the great thing about it is you can kind of choose what you're looking for and go and try it out and be like, hmm, you know, this gym isn't exactly what I'm wanting. I'm looking more of that high school cheer where we get to cheer football games, that kind of stuff. Appearance wise, like those are kind of the biggest things and I think that they're the most important when it comes to the different kind of impact or the effects between or the characteristics between school cheer and all-star cheer and rec cheer. With that being said, that was kind of everything that I had for this video. Um, if you guys have any questions at all about cheer basics, any kind of anything that I've talked about, if you want a more in-depth video of stunting positions, what each stunt part looks like, if you want a more in-depth video about high school versus all-star, any kind of school versus all-star, whatever, um, definitely let me know down below. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm also going to be doing this as a TikTok series as well. So be sure to follow my tip TikTok down below and I'll be posting that, those videos probably in time with this one. I'm not quite sure yet how that's going to go, but I'm sure you guys will see it. Anyways, I think that is all I have for this video. I'm going to try to get each of these videos out about once a week and the TikToks out probably about once every single day, but they're going to be smaller size pieces. I think that's it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to get into more of the cheer basics for you guys. And Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!